and get started here. Uh, you know, something that I've started to like more and more about the virtual First Fridays as opposed to the in-person First Fridays is there's no flashing lights and everything. I certainly miss seeing everybody face to face, but it is a heck of a lot cleaner getting started. Uh, so <laughs> before, before we officially dive in today, I just want to bring everybody's attention to the chat box. And if you want to take a moment there and just kind of type out who you are, what company you're with, and say hello to everybody, uh, please feel free to do so. Make sure that on the to section, it says to all panelists and attendees, uh, it defaults to all panelists. So that would be us that you can see you are the only ones that see that. And while we love seeing everybody that says hello, uh, I also want to make sure that you're able to interact with all the attendees as well. And also throughout the event while you're listening and absorbing, if you have any questions, uh, there is a Q&A box that you can use to ask any questions you have and we'll be getting to those. You can also use the chat box. One of the reasons that William Sink hired me is uh, I am able to multitask pretty well with those two open boxes and read questions from either. So if I do miss one, I apologize. I'm not that talented, but I'm pretty talented in that. So with all that being said, I uh, would love to introduce today's sponsor, Wilson Bank and Trust. We have Beth Hawk here today that's going to say a few words. So Beth, without any further ado, please take it away. Good morning and thank you so much for allowing us to be here within your screen this morning. Uh, but more importantly to uh, have Wilson Bank and Trust here in Williamson County. Uh, we are just right here down the street to the left of Dunkin Donuts on Carruthers. And we truly are a small business bank. Uh, all of our accounts from a business standpoint focus on small business. So you don't have to keep thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars uh, in there to get the free account. Um, but we, we do business accounts, we do business loans, lines of credit, all type of commercial lending for businesses. Um, and we also do personal stuff as well, all types of checking and savings. Uh, we do construction loans, we do uh, land loans. The, I think those are two things that a lot of people and realtors and all uh, have people looking at nowadays that some of the banks are not doing. Uh, I, as I say, we love to dig in dirt. So any type of construction loan, land loan, um, obviously we do uh, regular mortgages, things along those lines, lines of credit. Um, I have a HELOC special right now uh, at a 3.79%. If anyone out there is interested in that, uh, we'd be more than happy to help you. Again, I'm Beth Polk with Wilson Bank of Trust. Uh, you can just look me up on the internet and give me a ring. And, and Wilson Bank is always truly happy to be part of the uh, chamber. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Beth. We greatly Absolutely. appreciate you all being a part of these meetings and, and your sponsorship certainly makes these meetings possible. So we are we're very, very appreciative and thank looking forward much. to the Williamson and Kilo that you guys are going to be sponsoring for us next. Yes. So, it'll be exciting. So we'll be diving in. Now our speaker today is uh, Marithu Parikh. If you've not heard from her before, she spoke at a women in business event a couple of years ago and then William Sneak actually had the pleasure of doing some follow-up sessions with her and did some one-on-one -on -one meetings and and she does just a great job of laying out attainable goals to to really set you on the right path to achieve your your big picture goal and so you're going to be hearing from her today she has a great presentation lined up so Marithu without any we're going to toss it over to you here and uh, we'll get rolling. Fantastic. Get my... All right. So thank you everyone for showing up bright and early. I know it's Friday morning, eight o'clock. So it's a great way to start the day. I woke up, I'm sure as many of us, a while ago, and I was so excited for this. I was so pumped, but I had this nagging email just like over my head. I'm like, you know what? Let me just get this out of the way so I can be fully present for this, you know, for this meeting. So I get to my home office and I'm all working from home now and I start typing and in the first paragraph, I realize I've used the word triple twice, like triple growth, triple revenue. I'm like, you know what? I have to find another word. So I hop on the Google and I typed in triple synonym. See the results and that's when it happened. JLo was having triplets. I'm like, what? JLo's having triplets? How is this possible? So I started, I go in there and I'm like, gosh, it's amazing because it's like, she just, she, she like never puts on weight. She looks so good. Does she ever eat? Eat. Oh, so I jumped onto my phone. I was like, I got to get onto my fitness pal because I'm like tracking what I'm eating right now. So I put in my breakfast foods, my like cereal and milk, milk. Oh my gosh. My sister-in-law's best friend is breastfeeding and I have not sent her baby gift yet. So I jumped back on the Google and typed in unique personalized baby gifts. First result, 
sign from God, Pottery Barn Kids. I haven't repotted my plants and it's getting so cold outside. So I ran downstairs, went outside, went on the deck, started pulling them in. I was like, actually, it's a lot warmer than I thought. I, oh, do we cancel those tickets for sprint for fall break? So I jumped on my phone and got onto Southwest and went in there and the insanity went on for like 10 more minutes. Total distraction. Anyway, I finally pulled myself out of it. I came back up to my home office. I sat my butt down and started typing my email and realized, oh shoot, I need another word for triple. Does this happen to you? Do you have monkey mind? Throw me a thumbs up or a smiley face or something in the chat box to say, yeah, I'm not alone. This happens all the time. The distractions, the monkey mind. Let me, let me know again, like I said, in that chat box. Yes, yes, all right, so do yes. Give me a thumbs up or a yes, awesome. I know I'm not alone. Listen, it's no surprise given all the distractions and the demands that are being thrown our way 24 seven, am I right? I mean, chances are you're blowing up, you're waking up to this bad boy right next to you on your bedside table, right? Which is not healthy. Then we start the day and it's like putting up fire after fire at work. And on top of it all, right now we're dealing with all the emotions of all the people in the house. However, because you're so driven and you're so ambitious, you're thinking, well, how can I make this better? How can I do this faster? How can I be more productive? Well, I gotta tell you that the best way and where I'm gonna share with you for the next 30 minutes is to really reassess and bring things back to the basics. I'm gonna talk about the basics today and the basics always work, okay? So here's the thing, we're gonna be going through some really simple ways that we give up our control every day, that we disempower ourselves, and more importantly, some really simple strategies on how to take back control, how to get control of our distractions. Because here's the deal, distractions are thieves. Distractions steal your time, distractions steal your sales, distractions steal your clarity, and distractions steal your productivity. In fact, do you know that it takes, on average, uh, seven minutes to get into the state of flow? So if you've heard that word, you know, people throw it around a lot now, flow. So flow is essentially just concentration. So it takes you, on average, seven minutes to get to the point where you're fully concentrating on anything that you're doing. So how is it then that we're ever really fully concentrating, that we're really ever working at our highest performance levels, that we're doing our best work when we are constantly reacting or responding to a text, tweet, ring, ding, beep, church, person walking in, phone call, on average once every three to four minutes. The truth is we put our productivity at risk all the time and we sabotage our ability to focus on the things that matter most which is, I want, this is why I want to introduce you to the framework called ACT, A-C-T. So this is a great time for you to grab a pen or paper if you don't have it right now to take some notes because I'm going to give you some really easy strategies and we're going to use this acronym, A-C-T, because, well, it's easy to remember, but also if you want to have different behaviors, if we want to get out of this disempowering cycle of constantly having our attention being taken over by other people and other things, then we've got to act a little differently. Now, word of warning, these strategies, these tips are really simple. Like I said, we're back to the basics, but we, as we all know, easy isn't always simple to do. So just embrace the simplicity because I'm not here to waste your time. And I know these can be super, super powerful for you. So the first way that we disempower ourselves all the time, that we just give up our control, is that we rely on willpower. And willpower doesn't work. So here's the thing. So let's say that you're like, I really want to lose a few pounds and um, I want to get healthier. Would you put all the, the chocolate bars right in front of you, ready to do your work, and the chocolate cake right over here, and the donuts right on this side, and then say, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put this, I'm gonna surround myself. And here's the thing. I'm not even gonna look at them. And I'm sure as heck not gonna smell them. And I'm most definitely not going to taste them. Not going to work, right? We can't rely on willpower. However, when you're trying to do your best work, when you're trying to work at your 
optimal performance level, when you're trying to do your highest quality in the shortest amount of time, we throw out all these distractions right in front of us and think, Psh, not gonna look at it. Oh, I'm definitely not gonna react to it. And there's no way I'm gonna respond to it. Not gonna happen. We can't rely on willpower. So instead, we want to do the first strategy in ACT, which is to avoid distractions. I'm gonna give you five really simple ways to do this and take back control of your time, your productivity, and your attention. The first one is to simply clear your desk. Like I know plenty of us are working from home these days. So your desk might be right now, your kitchen table, or in your family room, or maybe you're lucky enough to have your own private office. But no matter what, the things on your desk are very distracting. So here's what really would happen. So imagine you're like, okay, I'm gonna sit down at my desk, I'm gonna start typing an email. You look down, and then you know how you're trying to think of the next word or the next thought or the next phrase? And when you're thinking, you have a neurological response, your eyes look up, you, your eyes shift. And when they look up, that's when it happens. You're like, oh wait, let me grab that sticky note and I've got to return this package and maybe I've got to bring this to the kitchen right now and I've got to get this to HR and I want to you know, send this out and do that email. And then just like, you just start doing the things because you see it there. And just that momentary lapse, even if you don't start reacting, y'all, you don't physically do it, that momentary lapse when you know it's going on the mental checklist takes you out of your flow and you can decrease your productivity by 40% over the course of the day by every time we, we do that, every time we have that little bitty thing of distraction. So instead, I'm just gonna pick up the papers and the folders and the stickies and the envelopes and just pick them up and then put them behind you, out of sight, out of view, just totally stay focused, okay? Easy enough, this one's real easy. I think we can do that one, so make sure you get that one down. Let's move on to the second one. Who here right now even probably, but all mostly during the day, and you can just answer in the chat box, a thumbs up, say yes, say me, has like 72 tabs open on their laptop or their computer all the time. Let me know in that chat box, you're like, yeah, that's totally me, I'm very guilty of that. Yes, I think, again, it could be a, lot, a bunch of us, right? So here's the thing with the tabs. The tabs are even more distracting than what's on your, on your desk because an open tab and all the open tabs are a constant reminder of everything you haven't gotten done, right? So every time your eyes, your eyes glance over, so you're, again, you're, you're doing your work, you're in good flow, you look up because you're thinking, your eyes shift and you see all the tabs. You're like, oh, I just gotta you know, make sure I don't do that. And I gotta send this one out. And I wanna see somebody like my picture on Facebook and I gotta send this and I gotta, and, and you just start, it's just like the stress. It's a conscious level of stress and it's a very subconscious level of stress that's over, it's like this weight on your shoulders. So instead, we just wanna go old school and get a piece of, uh, uh, like a pad of paper and a pen, so that's the one exception to clearing your desk, and just write down the things you need to get done instead of actually leaving all the tabs open. Or use your bookmarks, right? Just a good old school bookmarks and mark the pages. But again, you wanna, you wanna just X those out, close them, so you're staying totally focused. Okay, easy enough so far, right? All right, so let's move on to the third one. As you can imagine, our number one distractors of all time are our phones. These things, they, we're connected 24 seven. And uh, if you're like most people, you are on average receiving 120 emails a day, on average. So it could be you know 200, we could be left, but it's a lot of emails. And if you still have your notifications, on your phone or on your laptops or on your iPads or on your computers for your emails, this, it means you're getting distracted of a, at a minimum of 100 times a day. So if we take it back to flow, if we take it back to the 40%, and why am I always feeling distracted and scattered and I'm out of steam at three o'clock and you know I'm sending out an email without the attachment and all that stuff, I can guarantee you it's because a lot of this distraction, and here's the deal, we cannot rely on willpower. There's no way you're gonna see a notification come up on your phone or on your laptop and not respond, at least just at least look at it um, without getting distracted. So if you haven't done that already, just turn off the email notifications. Now listen, I could say to you, let's see, here's the deal. If you wanna not be distracted at all, and we know the phone's really bad, then just turn off all the notifications of everything, like all your news alerts and your text alerts and social media, 
and um, you know anything else that's coming into your phone. Is anybody gonna do all of that? Have like, let me know in the chat box. You're like, yeah, I would do that or no. Like, would you would you really turn off every single thing? There's always somebody who says yes, and I'm like, ah, I don't know who you are because I never would because that's just too much, right? It's too much. So instead of doing that. Try this fourth strategy that you probably know of but are most likely not using frequently or, if, or just most effectively. And this is to use the do not disturb uh, button on your phone. And essentially all this does, you go into your settings, you swipe your do not disturb, and all it does is prevent the texts and the rings and the chirps and the beeps and the notifications and the buzzes coming in to you on your phone. However, you still have full access to all the things on the internet and all the interwebs and all the apps, okay? and if you're really worried, you're like, well, someone important needs to get in, in touch with me, a client, my mom, my kids at school. Well, then just below that, it says allow calls from. You can allow those particular calls or notifications to come in and then nobody else. So there's no excuse for not to be using this, which by the way, I'm just talking like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. We're not saying the whole day. That's pray pray, right? We can't do the survive that long. So try this the next time you're like, I really need to get my best work done. I really want to be productive and I really, really want to work at my optimal performance level. All right, so let's bring this home with the home run, the fifth one. And if you haven't been paying attention till now, if you've been multitasking, just stop and listen to this one because this is the one, this is the one that is the Mac Daddy and brings it all home. And this is the Pomodoro technique. Again, you may have heard of it, you may not have, and if, you're, if you've heard of it, chances are you're not using it that much. The Pomodoro technique is based on brain and science research. And what that research shows is that your optimal brain performance is best utilized in increments of 25 minutes. In other words, you do your best work for 25 minutes. So if I told you, listen, all you have to do is stay focused, use these tips, Turn off the, you know, to, uh, close the tabs and clear your desk and do these things. Do not disturb just, just for 25 minutes and nothing else. Could you do it? Would you do it? I hope you're at home. I hope you're right now shaking your head like, I can do 25 minutes and my business depended on it, right? And so there is an app called Focus Keeper. Please just write this down and don't go on your phones right this minute, but write down Focus Keeper. That is a free app and it's a Pomodoro app that you can download for free. I would absolutely use the app and not your phone, your timer. And I'm actually getting on my phone just to show it to you because, um, because we can, because we're a small group and it's that, uh, okay, I'm gonna come back up to it right this time. Oh, here we go. It's a 25 minute timer and it looks just like that. And it's much better than using your, like looking at a clock or looking at your watch or something else because you always forget what time it is when you do that, you know? So use the timer and, Essentially, you're just starting your task. You're doing one task at a time, fully focused. And then after the 25 minutes, it's going to go to a blue screen for five minutes. And what the research shows is that for five minutes, you have to take a break. You have to. That's how your brain like really reassesses and recalibrates. And guess what you get to do in the five minutes? Just guess. You get to check your email. You get to check those social media. You get to jump on Instagram, on Facebook. You get to do all the things because you have that five minutes. And when that five minutes is up, you got timer goes back on and you go to another 25 minute totally focused uni tasking one task at a time and let me tell you you're going to be blown away blown away when you actually put this into use because you haven't done anything for 25 minutes in so long you have relied on willpower forever and have not been able to not be distracted that you won't even know you don't even know how powerful you can be you don't even know how much you'll be able to get done in that 25 minutes so I implore you to try these. I'm really excited. I would love to hear from you at the end, you know, after this to see how that goes, how that went. In fact, um, I worked with a client, Nancy, who had a full, who had a job and then took a different job to do a part-time job so that she could spend Fridays home with her kids and loved her job. And of course, wouldn't you know it, she started working Friday mornings. Friday afternoons, but then it was like, she's like, I'm basically working all day Friday, not what I signed up for. So she called me in, we, we, we looked, you know, at stuff, but I got to tell you the number one change that we made in her day and her time and everything were these, were these techniques, these distraction avoidance techniques. And the next time we met, she said, I closed, I closed my laptop at six o'clock on Thursday and didn't open it again till Monday. 
Like that's how powerful this can be when you are focused. Okay, so if does anyone have a question right at this minute? And if not, we're gonna jump in to the next strategy, but you can also um, you know, ask questions at the end. I know I'm trying to do a bunch here. And Griffin, if you let me know, otherwise I'll just jump, I'll just gonna jump into the next one. I'll let you know, I don't see any questions yet. Great, okay, awesome. All right, so the second way that we disempower ourselves all the time, that we give up our control, is that we're just not focused on the right things. So when I started my business 11 years ago, um, probably like all small business owners, entrepreneurs, super excited, working you know, 24 hour days through the night, getting everything up, learning everything I could about branding and marketing and sales and, and building websites and just doing everything. And uh, at that time I had young kids and it was not unusual for me to miss events, miss like going out with them on Saturdays or going to the zoo because my husband was doing it because I was always working so hard to get it going. Well, after a couple of years of this, quite frankly, uh, one day my husband came in to my office on a Sunday because of course I was working and he was like, you know what? We need to talk. Definitely never the good words to start a conversation, right? And he said the words that threw me into an emotional tizzy and he said, so, when are you turning this hobby into a business? Mm, no, he didn't. Yeah, he did. Before I could lunge across the room and be like, ah! I just it was like the waterfalls just started and I was just crying and I was like, don't you see how hard I'm working? Don't you see how much time I'm putting in? Don't you see how much energy I'm putting in? All to which he just said, but what about the sales, honey? And at that point, Oh, of course, I didn't talk to him for three days. But when I got over that, it was really like what I needed to hear. And it was like this, it's like the clouds had parted. And I was like, oh my gosh, how is it that I'm putting all my time towards this, all of my energy and getting such dismal results? And the truth is when I could finally step away and think about it, I was doing all the things. We were all doing all the things, right? Because all the things are so important. But if I didn't have the sales, there was no business. And the truth was, I was just focused on the wrong things. And I know that you, everybody, anybody here listening, everybody has these priorities, these things that are really important to you, whether it's in your business or whether it's personal, and you know exactly what they are. But in the day-to-day -day hecticness and the craziness of life, it seems like so often the most important things, the sales or the networking or the health or the relationships, they tend to take the back seat because we're so busy with everything else that is so important because the truth is it all is. So maybe you can relate to this. Let's say it's, um, it's you know, later today and you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm, since this presentation, I got really pumped. So I'm just going to go back to my office. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to get all the important things done, the things that are most important to me. But here's the thing. I'm just going to check my email for 10 minutes. So you look down, you're typing, it's nine o'clock, 9.15. You look up, it's noon. At noon, you're like, oh, you know what? I'm so far into this. Let me just like tie up these loose ends and I'll get back to, you know, the things I know I really should be doing that are really important, my biggest priorities in just a bit. So you look down, get back to your email, you look up, it's three or four o'clock. And now you're like, okay, 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 okay. I know I have a lot more email to do, but I gotta do this stuff, it's really important, but I'm so out of steam. I'm so tired now, I'm exhausted. And I have all these people in my house I gotta deal with. It's like, you know what, no big deal. I will just do it tomorrow. I'll just get back to it first thing in the morning, no big deal. Tomorrow morning comes around, it's nine o'clock, we're gonna do the things that matter most to me, the biggest priorities, but I'm just gonna check my email for 10 minutes. Look down, you look up, it's noon. At noon, you're like, I'll wrap this up. We look back up, it's three, and the cycle just happens over and over again, right? And we fall into this vicious procrastination cycle until one of two very bad things happen, two very, one of two negative outcomes. Number one, you're either up against a deadline and now you're totally stressed and it sucks because you have the deadline, so now you're gonna be like working really late, everyone's bothering you in the house, no one can do anything right, you're gonna eat crap, you're not gonna go, the, go for your walk, you're just gonna, you're gonna wake up five times during the night, everything's gonna go wrong in the morning, it's just always bad, right? It's just like you're never working at your best performance with the best clarity. Or number two, 
your goal, your biggest priority, one of them, whether it's personally or professionally, doesn't really have a deadline. Like, what if your goal is to lose 10 pounds? What if your goal is to get exposure to a new type of client? What if your goal is to gain a new experience? What if your goal is to get a promotion? What if your goal is to write the book? What if your goal is to create a consistent experience for your clients? These don't have deadlines. And so we fall into this vicious procrastination cycle and six months go by or three months go by, you don't hit the goal. Six months go by, you don't hit the goal. A year can go by and you never hit that goal. Now, what if on the other hand, you're like, you know what? The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come in and I'm going to be fully focused. I'm going to do the things that matter most and not get distracted by that email. And this is the C and act for paying attention here. The C is to commit to your power hour. Now your power hour is, I think, the most critical hour of your day, of your career, of your business, of, of your life. Your power hour is the first hour of every single day that you are fully committed, 100%, totally undistracted, intentionally, deliberately focusing on the big goals that matter most to you. Now, I recommend and personally adhere to a personal power hour and a professional power hour. And essentially, it's a personal, it's that first hour of my day that's fully for me, for me to fill my cup for my personal goals. So whether that means exercising or journaling or when I was writing a book, it was like, 30 minutes every morning, whether I wrote five words or 500 words, didn't matter. It was my time for my goals. And then about, and then another 30 minutes of the exercise and everything else. And then an hour, the first hour of work, that's fully for me at that time and often now for sales. And when I started doing this, can you imagine that I got myself out of that hole the two years and in the next quarter, when I put this in place for five days a week, by the way, that's you know, 20 days a month if we're just doing weekdays, was able to pull myself out and make more, more sales than I did in that next quarter than the whole two years before. And I know that you can do the same whatever your big goal is because imagine the impact that you can have on your life if you're fully intentional and deliberate about anything for 20 hours a month. So the power hour truly powers you. And I always say, if you do this, you earn your salary by noon every day, and you always end the day feeling accomplished. You never feel like at five o'clock, oh my gosh, what did I get done today? Because that's who we feel so often, and it's so frustrating, because I know you're working hard and you're running around like a crazy person from morning till evening, and it's the most, like, it just hurt your self-confidence so much and at five or six o'clock at night you're thinking like what did I even get done what was I do of value today so if you focus on your power hour and everything after that is just the nonsense it's the interruptions and the calls and the texts and the emails and just the silliness right it's okay because every single day you are moving the needle on the goals that are most important to you personally and professionally and by the way, don't get caught up in the whole power hour if you're like, this is, she's crazy, how am I going to do the two hours? Make it 30 minutes on each one. You're creative, you're smart, you're here for a reason, you're driven. I know you will figure out a way to make it happen. All right, so before we jump into the third strategy, if you have any questions on this, and I'll also take questions at the end, and you can just let me know for them. Still not seeing any come through yet. Just a gentle reminder. If you do have any questions pop up, chat box or the question and answer box as well are both acceptable places for those. Great, thanks. Okay, so just a quick recap before we move on to the third strategy in ACT. A is to avoid distractions. And C is to commit to your power hour. So let's move on to T, but I'm first gonna let you know what, what is that disempowering way? What do we tend to fall into? What is the way that we give up control all the time? But I'll start by asking you a question. Um, and actually, I think I, I probably know the answer, so you don't have to go ahead and put the chat box, but I'm just gonna assume that you had this on your calendar today, 
Am I right? He does not, right? Like you have this event. We typically have all of our meetings. We have our events. We have our doctor's appointments. We have our social engagements are on our calendar. But now let me know in the chat box who here has time on their calendar today to respond to their emails? Who here has time on their calendar today to work on very specific projects? projects that you're working on, or maybe very specific clients. Who here has time on their calendar um, to work on something today that's maybe you're delivering in a couple weeks from now? Most of the time, we don't. Thank you for those who are responding. Mostly we don't, right? And here's the problem with that. If it's not on your calendar, it's all on your calendar. And what I mean is if you find yourself in constant reactive mode, if you're constantly reacting to the texts and the rings and the dings and the beeps, the people walking in and the requests and the demands, there's a good chance there's a lot of white space on your calendar, even though I know you don't have a lot of extra time in your day. I know you're busy and you have a hundred places to be putting your attention. But when we don't have time blocked out to actually get the work done, we find ourselves reacting to other people's needs and demands continuously because we're good people, because we're collaborative, because we're partners, because we're just, we're good, right? We're nice people. But this is the problem. Your own needs, your own goals, again, they kind of just get left to the end of the day or for tomorrow or whenever, and we're not planning out for that. And this is the T and ACT which is to time block. And time blocking, if you're not familiar with it, or maybe you are, but it is exactly how it sounds. It's blocking time on your calendar to actually get the work done. Not just the end goal, not just the events, not just the meetings, but the time to do the work. So for example, you might have something on your calendar today, or maybe it's next Friday that's like, you know, get that deliverable out to your client or make that presentation, and that's on your Friday. But where was the time on Monday that for you to like get the research and the outline together? And where was the time on Tuesday to, to create the first draft? And where was the time on Wednesday to get the team feedback? And where is the time on Thursday to finalize it and practice so that you have that time on Friday to really have that great presentation? That's the stuff that's missing in between. And this is what keeps us always falling behind on what's most important. So as I mentioned, that white space is really, really dangerous because typically what will happen is someone will ask you, they'll be like, hey, um, you know, you're in the middle, you're trying to do your work, you're trying to stay in flow, you're trying to stay focused. And they're like, hey, do you have a minute? Can I ask you this? Or ding, beep this, here's an email, can you do this? And, and because you have nothing to look at on your calendar, because it looks maybe a little bit empty, you're like, oh, sure, yes, please, yes, thank you. Can I do this for you? Yes, this is a good time. Whereas if you should have had, sort of had your day blocked out, like here's specifically what I'm doing. Um, I'm working on, you know, I'm, I, have, I do have my email time, but it's blocked out two or three times a day, not 17,000 times a day that I'm looking at it. Or here's where I'm really gonna work on those resources for later in the week. Or here's my power hour blocked off. I'm gonna work on the research material, as you can see in this example, because it's something I never seem to get to. And when you start thinking about how your day is gonna work in between all the meetings, you can start taking control of the way you respond to other people and other demands. So when someone says, hey, do you have a minute? Now you can look at a calendar and say, actually, it's not really a great time for me right now. Could we pick this up tomorrow? Could, I, could we talk about it at lunch or have some free time later this afternoon? So instead of thinking about this like time management, we want to think about, think about it as task management. We all have the same time, but we all have different tasks. And how are you going to manage the tasks within the time that you have? So I'll leave you with one last example. I, um, I work with a client who had taken over a um, small to medium sized business and um, he was there for six months and he uh, was in a high leadership position, uh, but was very frustrated. He's like, it has this kind of family feel and people are walking in and out of my office all day long and I'm constantly disrupted, interrupted, and I just, I feel like I'm not doing anything. I'm, I have all these great ideas, I have all these great strategies to bring to the table, but nothing, like things are not moving forward. And here's the worst part, he started questioning, like, am I even the right person for this job because things aren't, you know, I'm not moving the needle here. And so we looked under the hood of what he was doing and the biggest change that we need 
to his way of operating was the time blocking. And we really started putting in the time for, okay, Monday mornings is your power hours for all the important things. And then we have specific time that you're just working on strategy and specific time for finances and specific time to, you know, work on, on, on planning. And, um, and the, but the, the thing was, he was like, but I don't want to lose this family feel. This is really important. It's part of our culture. So what we did was that on Fridays, we created, I think it was from 12 to five, just an open like office hours just so you can anyone could walk in and out at any time everybody knew that in the office from 12 to 5 they could do that so that way even his unstructured time was structured and i can tell you within six weeks of doing this he got more he said he had better results in terms of of course like profitability and revenue but also strategy and also just boosting his own confidence better results in six weeks than he had in the whole six months prior so I know this is possible, and I'm really excited for you to try this strategy. And by the way, if this feels like too much, you can always just stop with, start with your top three. Be like, what are the top three things that I'm going to put on my calendar today that is going to make me feel accomplished when and make me feel successful when my head hits the pillow tonight? Okay, so I'm going to quickly recap. I know we're toward, towards the end of our time, and I'm going to leave a couple of minutes. So. Here's what I'm gonna ask you to do is to commit right now to not all of these, not all of these strategies, because here's the deal. If you try to do all of these at one time, you're going to fail because it's too much. There's too many things. This is not the way habits are formed. So as a success coach, I can tell you the key to, your, to you forming a new habit is to pick one and focus on one. So I'm gonna ask you right now to put in the chat box, are you going to A, and everybody respond please, put in A, avoid distractions. Are you going to C, commit to your power hour, or T, time block your day. So make a commitment right now in front of your colleagues and your fellow um, members in the community and myself and just throw in the chat box, you're like, which is the one that I'm gonna focus on first? Just one so that we can really help you stay accountable and um, you're not focusing on all of them. All right, I see a couple coming in, but I wanna see some more. I got some T's, a bunch of T's. All right, we got a C, which is the power hour, an A, time block, awesome. Let's do, let's do some more in because if you're listening, you got to be committing because I want to make this time for you really, really, really worth it. Awesome. Okay. A lot of teas. This is great. I love that. All right. Well, commit to that. And here's what I want you to do is try this for three days. Try the one that you're you committed to for like Monday. Let's, well, no, so we can start today because you have a full day. So Friday, Tuesday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, do it for three days. And the thing is, you're going to kind of not be good at it, Like you're going to fall off of it. It's, it, you know, it's not formed overnight but you can get back on. And I guarantee that in that much time, you're gonna see such a tremendous change in your focus and your ability to get things done and just your, your just like your productivity that you're gonna be like, I can't believe I didn't try this earlier, okay? So try it for three days. And when you feel like, okay, I'm kind of like, I'm doing this, I'm getting, I'm sort of mastering the bit, then move on to another strategy. Sound good? All right, so I'm gonna, I know we need to wrap up in like the next minute or so. So let me know if you have any questions and then I need about like 20 seconds just to wrap up at the end. So um, Griffin, you can let me know if anyone has Yes, any. we have a question and it yeah. is, do you have a preferred method for organizing physical space like a home office? Um, yes, so I'll give you a, a quick answer and then whoever asked that, feel free to follow up if you want more. But. Um, the way I kind of think of any space, so any, whether it could be your home office, a kitchen, a, a closet, um, it, think of it in zones. And so you have different areas that you can quickly and conveniently access certain items and you can put them down, you can put them back there, you can retrieve them and access them, or retrieve them and leave them there, sorry, rather. And um, so in an office, for example, you might be like this side, this area, this right side of my desk, is going to be for like my supplies or maybe it's in like my top drawer will be all my supplies my tape and calculator and stapler and all that and this side is just going to be like for my papers so i might have a, you might have a few filers there or something and those are all papers so that whether you're coming in for a meeting or you're leaving you at least know it's on this side like this is where my papers are um on this side over here might be like um all of your technology so this is where i have plugged in everything for my, my chargers and my phone and my extra batteries. And this is, so this becomes sort of like the zone for your tech, tech zone. So that's the idea. If you can get basically get like items and then create separate zones, again, this works across 
any space, you at the very least, you're like, here's where I left it and here's where I can get it when I'm in a rush to get out. Any other questions? I'm not seeing any come through, Marie. Okay. All right. Well, then I will leave you with that. So, first of all, if you want to connect, I would love to because this is I one. I would love to hear how it goes. Like on. The Tuesday, you know, if you shoot me an email today and I'll say, and I'll be like, hey, I'll follow up with you. I'd love to hear how it goes. Also, if you want just resources in terms of like, I have lots of uh, great resources, like how to stop feeling overwhelmed, how to stop procrastinating, how to stay totally focused. You can come on over to lifeisorganized.com forward slash resources and find all that free stuff there. But I will leave you with this. When you take control of your time, when you take control of your attention, you can reach any goal in any area of your life that you want. Really, you can make the sales, you can lose the weight, you can buy the house, you can meet the projections, you can do it all. And what we did today is I gave you a taste of some of the research. You have some of the simple, the simple tools and the strategies. And so my question for you now is, how are you going to act? Thank you so much for your time and your attention and your engagement. And I hope this was really, really valuable for you. Perfect. And again, thank you very much for your time today and to Wilson Bank and Trust for sponsoring. Uh, keep up to date with all of our events on the events calendar. Uh, I've said this yesterday, but you can basically throw a dart at our calendar and land on a ribbon cutting. So we have plenty of those coming up. If you're itching to get back and see more people, be sure to check out our ribbon cuttings. We also have our Young Professional Holiday Party coming up at Franklin Bridge Golf Course. Uh, so be sure to register for that if you are able to attend. Um, again, thank you both for your time today and we will see you all. Uh, this is our last first Friday of the year, actually. The one in December was moved to February and hopefully we'll be in person for that. So let's keep our fingers crossed for that. And again, thank you all very much and we'll see you soon.